in the early stages of an epidemic. And the, the key is to flatten out the epidemic so it's not too bad. We've got to, we've got to do, social distancing works. It, Meaning it, it that you don't it. want too many cases at once so it doesn't overwhelm right. the hospital system. That's part of it. And also, the longer you delay it, there will be some people who won't get infected, and maybe there'll be treatments, and maybe there'll be vaccine. So the, the key delay is, is works in our favor. So for individuals, they, they want to delay their exposures. I think at the very least, they need to be assessed and screened. Um, and there's ways we can do this in tiered fashion. So there are other more common viruses we could start with testing for. And if those tests come back negative, so for example, the flu, if you test negative for the flu, you know, then we can test for some other things. And if that's negative, then you can do a coronavirus test. But I think there needs to be a process for that. You already see the Trump administration putting the scientists up front in a way that a couple of weeks ago they weren't. I mean, you had people saying, oh my God, are they, are they gonna muzzle Dr. Fauci? They're not gonna muzzle Dr. Fauci, yeah, right? He's been they, pretty clear about what he thinks, uh, even uh, as recently as yesterday. And no question, last night. And, and, and I mean, that's not a good message for the Trump administration, the American economy, but that doesn't stop them from getting it out. I think that's important. But very different in terms of the American ability to roll out testing very quickly. We're still lagging very dramatically behind. I have no doubt the private sector is now taking that seriously and the American government is pushing it, but it still is going to make it harder for us. Right Maybe now, more I bad can, news before we get good news. I think that's right. And right now, a couple things I would point to. First, there's a huge difference between the Italians, the French, and the Brits, right? I mean, the Italians, they got it wrong early and now they are maximal response, a lockdown that we've never seen um, in that country. And and obviously going to have a big impact on their economy. Right. The French government pushing really hard for EU stimulus. It's going to be hard to get together. While at home, Macron's doing very little indeed. And hmm. the danger for France, if this really expands, is a hell of a lot greater. While in the UK, you know, you've got fiscal policy and monetary policy coming together. You have Boris Johnson with his scientists around him, a much stronger approach, stronger approach on borders too. He's actually looking pretty good right now. And if you ask me where Trump is, compared to Macron versus Boris Johnson, he's closer to the Macron camp, not necessarily where you want the American leadership to be. The good news is that hospitals have been ready for this a few times. You know, we've been through this with Ebola, with H1N1. So a lot of the protocols and things that we need are in place across the hospitals uh, across the United States. Each morning at 7.30, we get our 51 hospitals on the phone and we go through all the things that we need. I think if you ask me what hospitals need the most, it's testing, testing, testing. We've got to make sure that we have the protective equipment for our uh, caregivers and for our patients. And then what we're worried most about is are we going to have enough caregivers to make sure we can take care of everyone. That's why their health and their wellness is critical. But we're already looking at how we use our ICU beds. How can we use alternative areas of care, including setting up tents outside of our hospitals? So we're already going through the process of looking where we have capacity, what we need to do, and what, we, what do we have to do in front of it? So we're trying to stay way in front of this as we see a wave of patients potentially coming forward.